Um, welcome again, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us and uh, um, for watching the video. So this, is, this webinar belongs to a series organized and offered by the International Society of Pharmacometrics. Um, my name is Yuan Xiong. I'm working with Cetera Strategic Consulting. With me is my collaborator, Wenping Wang. He is with Novartis. So um, today we are going to introduce an R package called PMX10, designed and implemented to facilitate basing PKPD modeling with STAN. Hopefully everybody can hear me now. <laughs> So um, let's move to the second slide. As introduced by Professor Andrew Gilman of Columbia University, the name STAN is an abbreviation of sampling through adaptive neighborhoods. In a nutshell, it is a probabilistic programming language implementing full basic statistical inference. Since its first stable version released in 2012, it has become one of the most powerful and efficient tools for basing statistical modeling and inference. So basically, STAN is a very similar and probably improved modeling language as BUX. Some of you might have used BUX before, for example, WinBUX, PKBUX. Um, STAN uses Hamiltonian Monte Carlo algorithm for sampling from probability distribution. And it also implements penalized maximum likelihood estimation with the optimization procedure. Here we show probably the simplest possible but still very useful STEM program for a linear regression model. It is an example taken from the STEM documentation. You can see that there are three essential blocks the data block reads in input data and declares associated variables. The parameters block specifies parameters to be estimated, and the model block defines priors and sampling statements and also writing the model itself. For more complicated models, sometimes we can add transformed data block, transformed parameter block and generated quantities. Later, we're going to show some real life STAN code and you can see some of the blocks being used. So one feature you can immediately notice from this piece of code, if you are familiar with R and use it often, is that all the data parameters and the variables in a STEM program need to be declared and type specified following pretty strict STEM requirements. And it's actually close to C language. We'll get to that a little bit later. So there are three steps to run a STEM program. First, the STAN code for specific model will be translated to a C++ program. Secondly, the C++ program will be compiled to a self-contained platform-specific executable. Lastly, we can run the STAN executable for the model. That means we read in the data and then generate posterior samples for parameters. OK, let's move. So um, since its early releases, STAN quickly caught the attention from a lot of people, both in academia and in industries, especially those among those who deal with uh, statistical modeling often. Not surprisingly, these included some PKPD modeners and the pharmacometricians. So um, being part of them, we were curious how to apply STAN on our PKPD modeling using clinical data. Through the last few years, the experience we have actually has been both rewarding and painful. We tend to believe that STAN has a great potential for some real serious contributions in this field, but at the same time, 
as its current version, we will meet uh, some hurdles and challenges in practical PKPD modeling. More specifically, um, there are four uh, big types of challenges or hurdles we see. The first one is about the language itself. Basically, as we already seen from that very, very simple linear regression model, um, large amount of C-like codes needs to be written. A lot of these codes actually are not directly related to PKPD modeling itself. Already shown, and in contrast to our code, we can see that there are strict rules of declaring and transforming data variables and the parameters. And also there's a lack of convenient ways to handle data in batch often requires loops within loops or loops after loops. So um, the second type of big concern is about the interference between input data and the model code. Basically, through our experience, we found that the input data format can depend on model specification, parameterization, etc. And vice versa, sometimes the model code themselves needs to be changed for the same model, but different data sources. This is not a surprise when you are considering all the data types are very strictly defined. So you can imagine for individual type of data or population type of data, you need different codes to define the, the data or parameters. And also, one key concern for pharmacometrics applications is the input. So many of us know that our inputs often involve discrete time events such as dosing, and this can be confounded by various rules. All these things actually can be difficult to be integrated into the dynamic PKPD system we are going to solve. The third type of concerns we have is that for now, um, the ODE software for the standard release is not yet ready to deal with real life PKPD data. There has been some model spe specific ODE software tailored for rather narrow industry applications, but there hasn't been a generic efficient ODE software that can deal with all kind of ODE equations we use in our everyday PKPD modeling work. And lastly, there's no standard procedure for PKPD model qualification clearly defined under a Bayesian setting. I guess this is not only for STEM, but for maybe a group, a large group of Bayesian statistical analysis to the PKPD data. So with these challenges and the hurdles, we began to think whether there are ways we can tackle some of these. For example, in terms of coding PKPD models instead, is there a way that we can modularize some processes for common pharmacometrics practice? And can we standardize certain parts of STAN codes and at the same time standardize the input data formatting process so that they can be naturally compatible with each other. Next, in terms of solving PKPD systems, for those same events with various rules, can we design a mechanism to integrate them seamlessly into the dynamic system so the user don't have to worry about the num numerical things and for standard compartmental PK models, can we code in the closed form solutions that are already available and so that they can be readily called by the users? And importantly, for more generic ODE-based PKPD models, can we de develop a um, sampler compatible ODE software that can handle most of our data sufficiently well? With these thoughts in mind, we develop this R package, basically to fa facilitate STEM-based model building, diagnostics, and the simulation process. 
So as you can see, the overall flow is the same to any PKPD modeling and analysis or same with any other general modeling practice. So here we start with a bunch of inputs. There are mainly two types of inputs, the source data set and the model specification by user. With these inputs, we fit it to the model building process, which is handled by PMX model object. First, use model specification, we have a template stand code that can generate a model specific stand code. And then this will call a model customized software within the code. And after that, we can call the native STAN combination engine to do combination. So after the combination, basically, we have a um, correct programmer corrected, already compiled um, STAN model. Next, we use this compiled model and link to our data to do the sampling. Again, this gray box, the sampling, is the native sam sampler of STAN. After sampling, we can get the posterior samples and parameters. So these two steps are put together, handled by the PMX STAN feed object. And then after we get posterior samples, we can feed these into post-processing, and we can do all kinds of things like convergence um, analysis and diagnostics, and also PKPD model-specific diagnostics, or even Bayesian model-specific diagnostics. And we, can, if we have a bunch of a collection of models, we can do model comparison and selection. And lastly, every model needs to serve its own purpose. For our many of our application, we need to do clinical trial simulation so that we can really help the decision making process for clinical development. To do the inference, we also need other inputs, other considerations, probably from the project team or uh, stakeholders. So um, let's first, let's again go to the flow chart at, from uh, another angle, from top, middle, and down levels. So if we look at the top level, this is the data level. Basically, we have a data preparation function ready, which implicitly takes into account the model specification itself. So basically here, the stand readable model compatible input data is already compatible with the model specification. So we don't need to change the model code if we change the data set. And then at, in the middle, here we have described the process all the way from the input to model building to model fitting and post-processing. And as we, we mentioned, the two gray box in the middle um, is the native stand engine. And what's in the bottom here is what we consider the most unique uh, about PMX STAN. Basically, we have a STAN translator for PKPD models, which interpret pharmacology language to modeling language. And this part, generic PKPD ODE server and library of closed form PK servers, is basically the C++ based solving engine, which has been integrated into the sampler and compatible to the no U-turn sampler, sampler of STAN. Okay, I think now um, it's time to look at some real code and to see how it works in R. I'm going to first start with um, demo, which is basically the same code as shown in this slide. And we'll come back later to summarize what we have seen and what PMX Dan has done. Let me open my um, R Studio window. 
So hope, hopefully you can still see the R Studio window, right? Okay, great. Can you see my R Studio window? Is it on it? Let me check whether I'm sharing the screen. Okay. Switch. Entire screen. Give me one more second. Okay. I think um, we are ready to go. So um, here is our studio um, opened just now, a blank one. Um, the first step, of course, is to call the library. I'm going to type library in X stands already here, as you can see. It will note some required libraries. And then I'm going to start the model building process. As the code I show in the previous slides, I call this model object as M. I'm going to define PM extend model. By the way, you can see since we've already done extensive documentation in this uh, R Studio, whenever you type some related words, it will give you prompt. For example, here you can see it shows when you type PM extend, there will be PM extend fit class and PM extend model class. We start with model building, so it's this model block. And also, you can see here um, our studio will prompt with all the arguments we need to build a model. Basically, you can see the first one is the type. So since I'm going to build a PK model anyway, so that we I, I'm going to just use the default value, which is PK. We don't need to do it again. The second will be the path of the model. So I'm going to type path. So at this time, when you type path, um, another prompt from the help will show you that path is a stream to specify the path that will be used to store the model, stand input data and the model fitting and diagnostic results. For example, here I want to type the path as PK, compound name ABC123, of course, is a fake name. And then other things, root, the default root is first order absorption, but here I want to use IV infusion. And lastly, um, also you can see there are some arguments for PK, PK model structure where I'm going to use the, the default two compartments and the parameterization of the PK model where I'm going to remain the default one which will be um, parameterized by clearance volume. And then for the compile here, we'll have an option to make it compiled during initialization. So now you see Basically, the model has been initialized and there are some default settings are shown as messages. So it will take a couple of minutes maybe to compile this model, but actually you can see a directory is already cre created and actually the stand code for this specific public model has already been generated. At this time, we can take a look. So here is the generate auto-generated stand code. You can see we have the data block, we have the parameter block, and here it's more complicated than just a linear regression. So we write this transformed parameters block and the model block, and also we added the generated quantities block these are mainly to calculate the not likelihood for diagnostics. So um, for the data block, you can see there like N sub, that's the num number of patients, and also N 
observation of NSAF. Basically, these are number of observations for each patient, and also those number of doses for each patient and all the concentrations. As we can show, as we'll show later, basically these data are all transformed from a Langman data set. Now I want to point to an important part, which is here. This is linear compartment IV infusion. Basically, this is um, the underlying C++ code suffer for the closed form solution for a two compartment PK model with IV infusion. So it seems that the model has been, the code has been compiled su successfully. And uh, um, then let's move to the second part, which is data part. The function to do data transformation is called prepare da input data. Yes. Um, we want to locate the file in the okay. For example, I have a data set folder that store all the data files. And uh, this specific um, data set is called data pub pk abc123.csv. Also, model is what we just uh, generated is the name is M. So after doing that, you can see again some default uh, value is being um, sent out shown in messages. The data type is set to population by default and here we didn't provide any initial values for a lot of PK models. Those are basically zeros. So they are set to zeros by default. And then we actually can take a look of this data. So basically, it's a list with four elements. One, the first element gives you the data type. The second one is, a, an, an, again, another list. Actually, it's the second element of DAT that was fit into the STAN code as the STAN input data. And also we have the third element, which gives you the ID, and also the, the fourth element gives you some covariates. This will be used when you want to do some post-processing, for example, subgroup analysis based on covariates. So for now, this is the most simple one, so we didn't uh, use covariates. So it was set to now. And then, after all this, we can finally go to the fun part, which is PMX, PMX then fit. Here we have the model M, we have the data DAT, and then there are some um, arguments, which is the native arguments for STAN. For example, it, number of iterations, here we can use 400, and number of chains, um, normally it's um, suggested to use multiple chains, but just to save time here, I'm going to just run one chain. Let's see. So the progress will be tracked by Stan and give you which chain, how many iterations it has run. It runs pretty fast. And there are some messages, maybe they mm, encounter, sometimes they will encounter some num numeric problems, but uh, most of the time they are pretty benign. So um, we already have this, and basically the feed, you can see there is a um, folder called feed, but for now we haven't really put any um, real things in it. Um, one thing we can first do is to print feed, so we have an option to um, do it on the screen or not on the screen. Let's, let's first just do it on the screen. So if, if the default way will be print the result, the statistics of all the 
posterior parameters on the screen. And uh, also, it will generate the summary text file in this feed directory, which will be used to store all the results and, uh, um, for example, trace plots and the goodness feed plots. So you can check any time even after this. Next one, we can do trace, trace plots, traces feed. And here, that's the traces. It will be automatically saved as a PDF file. And you can check whether these chains are behaving nicely. If you have multiple chains, it will show each chain in different color. And you can check whether they have converged to the same distribution. Next one, WAIC. which is the Watanabe Akaiki information criterion most useful for model selection. And we'll get to that a little bit later. It's something similar to AIC we used, but specifically proposed for basing models. And lastly, I'm going to show some gen general goodness of feed plot we used in PKPD. See, a file called overall.gov.pdf has been generated. Here we have implemented three different types of goodness of fit observed predicted versus observed data. And individual fittings, these are the median of the prediction and 95 predictive interval of the prediction on top of the observed data points, which is the blue circles. Lastly, the re residual plot, basically it's residual versus predictions. So for this specific example, um, we didn't do covariate analysis, but um, we'll show later, a little bit later, you can also do subgroup analysis by covariate. So as I already mentioned a little bit, we have, um, we have done some extensive documentation for this package. So not only here, you, you can also check directly through this help, help tab in, uh, RAND, in, in R Studio. So here shows the um, documentation for PMX that model. It gives you the description and how you use it, what does each argument means, and the details, which explains the rationale why we write this class in this way, what's the use of, for example, the stand template code, and also some methods, basically what kind of method um, methods does this um, class have. And also you can just go directly to other functions, for example, prepare input data. This is the documentation for data in preparation and also uh, PMX then fit object, where again gives you the arguments and also more details of the rationale and also the methods for this class. Okay, so um, just to go back a little bit, here we created um, um, here we created um, a folder called PKABC123 to store all the things for this PK modeling using STAN. Here is the generated auto-generated STAN code and also the summary of the um, posterior statistics and the traces and goodness of feed plot. So that's basically what we have shown um, here, a two compartment population PK model for IV infusion parameterized by clearance volume, soft by closed form solution and compiled during initialization. So the automated modeling process involves stand code generation, data preparation, and invoke a NAT 
um, for sampling. And also for post-processing, we've implemented the trace plots and the uh, um, WIC for check basin model fittings and also PKPD specific goodness fit. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So um, next example actually um, shows um, how we do um, PKPD modeling with then Basically, this model needs the user to input uh, the ODEs. But as of now, that's all the user needs to do in addition to what we have already shown. Here you can see this is the ODE stream um, written in the most possible um, simple way. Um, so it, it is a one compartment uh, PK with um, first order absorption. And here for the e effect um, compartment, it's an indirect response model. After we write this and we call this instant that stand that extension, a customized ODE software called an ODE extension will be generated specifically for this input ODE system. And you can also see it will give you some message and showing that the system parameters has been recognized and output for the convenience of the model specification by the users. So this um, C this actually this server has very high efficiency because it was written in C++ directly and it can seamlessly handle dosing events of various rules and flexible dosing schedules. As of now, it already has capacity to fit multiple endpoints simultaneously. Now the next slide basically shows how we uh, complete this PKPD modeling process. So this uh, one in bold face is what we already show. And all the other parts are actually the same as, almost the same as that for a PK model. Um, so it's just for the model building process, you can see there are several different uh, arguments here, which we're going to introduce a little bit later to let you know what are the arguments for PK models, what are the for PKPD models. But um, you can see the data part, the fitting part, and uh, um, the trace plots and, and diagnostic plots are all the same. In this PKPD model, basically, we have two imaginary covariates, which is called biomarker one and biomarker two. And also we provide the initial values um, of the state variable for each patient, which was defined in the data set by the column called BSL baseline. So you can see in a little bit that these are all um, automatically transferred to the data nest prepared for STEM. So let's maybe show some um, real thing here for this model. Since there are uh, more inputs, I already put this example into um, a script. So I'm just going to select this part and let our studio run it. Can see it runs very fast. Basically, this is the user's input ODE, and then this is calling instant, instant stand extension. And then as expected, an, a, a new ODE extension for stand has been created, and these are the system parameters. With this, then we can do the model initialization. Notice that here I didn't let the model to be compiled when I do initialization. If I just do this, then we can actually see a model path called PKPD M5 has already been created. And the model specific stand code is already generated here. We can check the code. It's a little bit different where 
for the PKPD model, basically we have this event. Um, we have you have dosing events and you have observation events. And notice that we also have EVID. I guess anyone who has worked with Nauman are very familiar with this thing. Um, this actually is the behind engine that enables us to integrate the dosing events and uh, more complex dosing schedules into our system. I also want to point to this part, generic ODE interface. Basically, this is to call the ODE software that was compatible to the sampler specifically for this model. Okay, so um, as I've, we already shown in this code, we can do compile now separately. Um, I will net, I can net it run, but uh, again, um, this will take a couple of minutes. So basically I have one version that I already compiled yesterday. Um, this is PKPD M5. So I have all the things down here. Um, I will show you the fit result a little bit, but here I want also show you this data part. So you can see a little bit different for this data part compared with the previous one. Now the d.cop element basically has not only ID, but also biomarker one and biomarker two one is a continuous type of biomarker and two is um, categorical biomarker. That's because we actually are specified in this data preparation part. As I mentioned, all the other parts are the same, except that because we have these biomarkers, we can do more um, intensive diagnostics for example, subgroup analysis by covariates. So here are some codes. I'm going to do observation versus prediction by this biomarker, and I can do residue plot for this biomarker. So let's check. This is the traces. Basically, we have four, we run four chains, and they look not too bad, but again, the purpose is not to uh, look at whether this model can fit this uh, data the best. And also overall goodness of fit, as we've shown before, this looks pretty neat. And I also want to show you maybe one plot for biomarker one. So here, biomarker one is a continuous and we set the cutoff line at one so you have two subgroups. One is biomarker one less than one, the other is greater than one. For biomarker two, you have three different categories, A, B, and C, so it will automatically subgroup data as this. Of course, for this example, it's pretty trivial and we didn't find any signal by subgroup analysis, but just to show the capacity. So, um. I think we can maybe go to the next um, example. Basically, it's I want to just show a little bit about the next example. For example, you already have some um, model fit to some data, and then you want to try the same model with a different data set, even um, an individual data set. This is what we did. We can just say copy M5 and uh, use a new path. So by this, there will be a new folder created as um, PKPD M6 and uh, all the other, for example, the ODE streams and other um, model specifications will be copied. And then you just need to focus on prepare the new data set and redo the fittings. So this is one feature we have. Um, okay, I think now it's time to um, go back to the slides. Um, let's wrap up a little bit and revisit in more details of what PMX Dan does for us. 
Um, so here is a table summarize all the model specifications according to target model type. So uh, there are four specifications common for both model types. Um, and then there are three for PK models only and four for PK, uh, five for PKPD models only. You can see that um, the default values are um, in both found. This is just a summary so that um, you can check back later. So um, what, um, so let's maybe start from the model initialization step. Um, you can see that in this step, scan codes are automatically and dynamically generated from model specifications. After we uh, call PMX scan model function, it will give you um, model specific scan source code that you can actually access in your uh, specified path. And of course, if you are not um, satisfied with the current default settings, for example, by default, we set all the priors as non-informative, but a lot of times you might want to change it as informative ones, so you can just um, go to that stand code and change accordingly. And it's very easy to find where to change. And also since all the programmer uh, or the pro, uh, uh, grammar has been checked correctly, you don't have to worry about you might write something wrong and not um, follow the stand um, restrictions. So that's a convenient thing. And then the input data structures required by Stan are automatically prepared from existing Nauman data sets. So here is the data set, um, Nauman data sets. I guess it's familiar to a lot of us. You have ID, compartment, um, DV, EVID, amount time. And for infusion, we also have a rate column. And after run this data preparation function, basically your data becomes this list where we've already been through when uh, we did the, the demo. And you can see this list is already compatible with the um, stand, the data block in the stand code. And next, you we can just put the model and data together and implicitly invoke the sampling engine from Stan, and then uh, all the progress will be tracked and reported by Stan. Um, there's nothing here are basically what you can see by running Stan by yourself. And after the fittings, the convergence of the MCMC chains and distributions of the posterior samples can be checked. So um, I already documented, um, put in the documentation for this function. Actually, there is a trace plot um, function also in our stand, which did similar things. But for that one, um, I I feel that I cannot directly see the posterior distribution, so I just uh, rewrote this traces plot. But it's similar to what's already been um, offered by trace plot in our stem. And uh, um, so for WAIC, as I mentioned before, it's um, basic model specific diagnostics. Um, it's called a Watanabe archaic information criterion. Um, it works just like the archaic information criterion and the provides a measure of the relative quality of fitted models for the same given data set. And it was proposed specifically for basic models. Um, and it's, of course, in particular useful for model selection among a connection of fitted models. A couple of reference has been provided at the end and also in the documentation of this package. So lastly, um, we provide some commonly used overall goodness of fit. For example, individual fittings, prediction versus observations, and residual plot. 
if you want to do a subgroup analysis by covariates, you can do, for example, observation, observation versus prediction, and also um, a residual versus prediction by subgroups. But as in, you can imagine, actually, all these kind of things are very easy uh, to expand by user and customize by user once you can access all the code and all the posterior uh, distribution samples. So um, as a summary, here we compare um, the process of building a two compartment population PK model in STAN uh, before and after using PMX STAN. So before we use PMX STAN, it usually requires rather non-stand coding for all the variables, parameters, and model specifications, followed by non-trivial R codes for post-processing. So um, I needed um, approximated um, estimation of uh, no number of lines of code needed. And after we use it, basically uh, all the process can be just condensed within about nine, 10 lines. Here are PMX stem model and prepare input data. Then we do feeding and then we do trace plots, WIC, goodness of feed, and subgroup analysis. So by this contrast, I think you might agree with you with me that there are at least three advantages of using PMX stem. First, it frees users from intimidating coding that are not commonly used in pharmacometrics. So users can focus more on the model building itself and the pharmacological things to be considered. Um, the second one, um, since we have standardized a lot of things and modularized a lot of things, it minimizes the pos possibility of errors and facilitates a more practical basic PKPD modeling practice. And also, since everything is provided um, and conveniently accessible by users, the whole thing, the whole codes and all diagnostics are fully extensible and, and can be customized easily, especially for some most ad more advanced users. Um, so we are about to approach the end. Here is a summary of what we have done. And we have um, implemented some most often used PK models, one to three compartments, and these three types of drug administrations. And we have um, you implemented two types of parameterizations. And also generic PKPD models that can be written in ODE forms, we can just call the instant ODE extension. Currently, we are we have some things on um, in our plates that we want to um, continue working on. For example, the ODE software it, it's already uh, able to um, handle multiple endpoints. Then we need to also um, change our interface to make this uh, conveniently accessible by the user and um, uh, all the goodness of feed functionality can be expanded pretty easily. Also, um, it's easy to imagine that after we have all the posterior samples, we can implement a simulation module and uh, uh, at least to net um, user give some specification of the simulation and run it automatically. Um, another interesting thing we are considering is to explore the interface with shiny then so you don't have to go back and forth between different um, folders to, to see what's there, but you can interact to see, uh, for example, traces, goodness of fit, and the simulation results. For some future work, we are considering other forms of PKPD models and also more general statistics models that are frequently used in pharmacometrics, for example, survival models, and most importantly, whatever requested most by the users. So um, at the end, we would like to thank a lot of colleagues from the pharmacometrics community for their inspiring discussions and constant encouragement. So as some of you might remember that we presented the poster at ACOP 6 last October. And since then, we 
um, really get a lot of very helpful inputs and um, a lot of people has emailed us about it. So uh, thank you very much. And also we want to thank uh, the STAN team for their helpful discussions and the inputs. And also, last but not least, we are very grateful to um, um, Brian, Tim, and Vijay for that they are the organizers of the ISOP webinar series. They have provided this uh, wonderful opportunity of presenting, and they have us all the way uh, to make this event possible. So last night, there are some references um, and also this is uh, our contact information. Thank you very much. So um, I think there might be some questions online or when can do you want to? No, I think we can stop now. Uh, we already answered many of the questions posted there. If they have uh, further questions, uh, they can send an email to you or to myself. Uh, I think we can end it. Okay, okay. Again, thank you very much for attending, for your attention, and for our uh, view after the event. Um, we are looking forward to hear back from you very soon.